in today's class we will study about the components of blood we have already started in the previous class that the components of blood there are three types of components of blood that is rbc wbc and blood platelets blood platelets so we have discussed about rbcs now today we will discuss about wbcs wbc stand for white blood cells now wbcs are known as white blood cells why because they contain no pigment see as if we compare wbcs with rbc we know that rbc contain the pigment known as hemoglobin here wbcs have no pigment that's why there is no color in the white blood cells and they are known as white blood cells so white blood cells are also known as also known as leukocytes leukocytes why because leuco means white and cyte means cell so white cell so wbcs are also known as leukocytes why because leuco means white and cyte means cell so wbcs are white cells with no pigment now wbcs are considered as the uh, wbcs are considered as the army of the body as the army of the body why because it protects our immune system because it protects our protects our immune system so it protects our immune system from what it protects our immune system from various pathogens from various pathogens like bacteria viruses parasites germs etc so why blood cells are called as the army of the body because it protects our immune system okay so it protects our immune system from pathogens like bacteria viruses parasites and germs so they are the army of the body Now, if we talk about the lifespan of WBC, WBC lifespan is also thirteen to uh, we can say thirteen to seventeen days or more than seventy to twenty seven days. This might be the lifespan, so it is short lived. So when the, when the WBCs die after these days, they are also formed in the the new WBCs are formed in the bone marrow. New formed in the bone marrow. as red blood cells were formed in the bone marrow in the similar way wbcs when they are destroyed after a particular life span the new wbcs are formed in the bone marrow now if we compare the size of wbc with the rbc wbcs are larger in size wbc are larger in size as compared to rbcs okay so if we compare the size means how much wbc is longer rbc is larger wbc is are more larger than rbc so the size of if we if the difference comes you can write one point that wbc is are larger in size than rbc and one more point you can write that rbc is are red in color because of the presence of hemoglobin and wbc is are colorless because of the uh, because there is no pigment present in them so this might be the Difference and many more difference you can find out. Now, again, if we categorize WBC, WBC are categorized into five types. Are categorized into five types. Okay, so they are categorized broadly under two headings into five types. Okay, that is granulocytes. granulocytes and a granulocytes a granulocytes so uh, 
uh, eight granulocytes and granulocytes are the broad headings under which the five types of WBCs occur. So granulocytes consist of three types of WBCs that is neutrophils. basophils and eosinophils. So these are the types of granulocytes. In the similar way, A granulocytes are categorized into monocytes and lymphocytes. Lymphocytes. So WBCs are broadly categorized under two headings that is granulocytes and agranulocytes. Now granulocytes are further categorized into neutrophils, basophils and eosinophils, and agranulocytes are further classified into monocytes and lymphocytes. So one by one we will see the types of white blood cells. So the first broad category was granulocyte. Granulocyte. So granulocyte, as I said, that granulocyte means grains means those uh, the substances which are consisting of some kinds of granules. So the blood cells, the white blood cells, which consist of which consist of granules. In their cytoplasm, in their cytoplasm are called granulocytes. Are called granulocytes. So, what are granulocytes? The WBCs, the type of WBCs which consist of granules, are the granulocytes. Now, as I told that granulocytes is a broad category and another one is the A granulocyte. So if we compare granulocyte from A granulocyte, definitely from the name you can understand that granulocyte means those which are having granules and A granulocyte means those which are not having granules. Now granulocyte, the what are the granules present? See, yeah, granules are small sac like structure which contains which contains enzymes in them contains various enzymes and other components so these components are released from the cells whenever they see any kind of uh, pathogen any kind of uh, bacteria or viruses which may inject the cell and cause uh, destruction of the cell so these small granules contain the enzymes for the destruction of those kinds of pathogens. Now another more uh, type of uh, we can say that characteristics of granulocytes is that the nucleus the nucleus present in the uh, the nucleus present in the WBCs are low. So in the, the characteristics of granulocyte is that they have granules and the other important characteristics is that the nucleus present in the cell, suppose this is a cell and inside is a nucleus, so nucleus might be lobed like this, okay, this kind of structure may be seen, these are the lobes, so nucleus is lobed in, uh, in WBCs of granulocytes. Now why this nucleus is having the lobed structure because these nucleus is containing the chromatin, the genetic material which is the chromatin. Okay, these are containing the chromatin. So why we are saying that it is lobed? It is lobed because it has to, and if suppose a germ is entering here, then it has to engulf that germ. This germ, it has to engulf. So definitely it will move. So when it will move, the, chrom uh, the chromatin material will not scatter here and there. They will be present in the lobe itself. So that's why the nucleus is lobed and, the, uh, and whenever they move, they show mobility. The germs, when they enter, they try to engulf that uh, germ. But the chromatin material does not separate due to the presence of the lobe. So this is the uh, characteristics of the lobe that uh, even though they move to engulf the uh, germ cells, the chromatin material does not get separated here and there. So this is the structure, this is the characteristics of the lobed nucleus.
Now, granulocytes are, as I said, are cap categorized into three types that is, neutrophils, neutrophils, basophils, and eosinophils. So, these are the types of granulocytes one by one we will see. Now, first is the neutrophils. So, neutrophils. These are the maximum white cells present in the maximum granulocytes. Okay. Present in the white blood cells. Present in the white blood cell that is 60 to 70 percent. Their percentage is about 60 to 70. Means they are present in huge amount inside the uh, white blood cells and also they are smaller in size smaller in size as compared to the other types that is basophils and eosinophils now next characteristics of neutrophil is that it is multi lobed multi lobed means it is having 3 to 4 lobes in it okay so uh, this is as i told you about the lobing of the nucleus that they are present so that the chromatin material does not scatter here and there. So, this is multi lobe. Now, neutrophils, the important function of neutrophil is that whenever the neutrophils experience any kind of pathogen, especially bacteria, okay, they kill especially bacteria, other pathogens also it kills, but especially I am talking about bacteria, the neutrophils function is that whenever it sends any kind of uh, invading pathogen inside the body, it is the first cell, it is the first cell to reach the site of invading, to reach the site, a site where the pathogen is entering. Pathogen has entered and when it reaches the site, what it does, it starts to invade the Pathogen. It starts to invade the pathogen. It does not wait for basophil will come or eosinophil uh, will come to react on that. But it starts invading. It starts to kill the pathogen. It starts to kill the pathogen. So this is the important function of... As I said, there may be 3 to 4 lobed. So... This is first lobe, second lobe, three lobe. Similarly, four lobe may also be there, and they also contains the cytoplasm. Uh, sorry, granules in their cytoplasm. So, in neutrophils, there are two types of granules. Mainly, two types of granules present. More granules would be there, but basically, there are two types of granules present. The first granule is known as the primary granule, and the second is known as the secondary granule. So, what is the function of primary granule? See, primary granule acts as lysosomes. Lysosomes means they produce the enzymes to kill the pathogens or any kind of cell which is being destroyed. And if I talk about the secondary nucleus, they are helpful for the inflammatory response. Inflammatory Response. Inflammatory response is a type of immune response developed by the body itself in case of some kind of allergens. Sometimes you might have insect bite. So at there you can see there is swelling. How that swells? Because the tissue gets ruptured and water enters inside that tissue and the swelling takes place. And after the swelling, uh, that pathogen will not be able to affect anymore. So this inflammation protects the body. So these are the characteristics of neutrophils. So now second is basophils. Basophils. Now basophils constitute about zero to five percent, zero point five to one percent of uh, WBCs. Okay, the, the constituent is this much. Now, they are larger in size. They are larger in size as compared to other uh, WBCs that is neutrophils or eosinophils, And they appear dark blue when 
stained. So this is the characteristic that if you have to see, if you have to recognize the basal cells among the white blood cells, so you can use stain. And by staining, if you get the color dark blue, it means they are basophils. Okay, that basophil that is the white blood cells. Now basophils are helpful in the protection from viral diseases or viral infections. Protection from viral infection viral infection and also they are helpful in a uh, helpful as anticoagulant anticoagulant means they help uh, means what they do they uh, prevent or they uh, allow blood clotting blood clotting okay they are anticoagulant they don't allow the formation of blood clotting. Okay, they don't allow the formation of blood clotting because they secrete heparin. Okay, because they secrete heparin. Because they secrete two types of enzymes that is heparin and histamine. I will talk about histamine. See, so when they secrete heparin, why they secrete heparin? Because they prevent blood clotting they don't allow the blood to clot in case of any injuries or any kind of uh, uh, if you have got any kind of wounds so this acts as anticoagulant now next it is also uh, it also responses to allergens responses to allergens it also responses to allergens means that if uh, it uh, senses that the allergens is entering any allergens is entering inside the body entering in the body then the immune system immediately starts to work immune immune system immune system immediately starts to work immediately starts to work so as i said they respond to allergens means any kind of allergic reactions occurring in our body means any kind of allergens is entering in our body then the, that immune system is ready to invade that allergens but in case if it sense any sense any kind of damage to the cell any kind of damage to the cell what it does it produces the enzyme histamine it produces the enzyme histamine it produces the enzyme histamine and this histamine what it does it uh, may it produces the inflammation it produces the inflammation in, in that body and due to that inflammation the allergen is unable to invade the or an allergen is unable to react on the body or react on that particular cell or the tissue. Now basophils are bean shaped uh, bean, basophils are bean shaped nucleus. Now here if you see the structure of basophil the basophil have kidney shaped or bean shaped nucleus and these are the granules present. So this is how basophils look and these are the characteristics of basophil. Now third is eosinophils. So the percentage of eosinophils in WBC is 6 to 7 percent okay this is the percentage amount that they are present in the WBCs and they are two lobed two lobed if you see the structure of isonophil now this is the white blood cell so they are two lobed like this this type of lobing is there these are the two lobes and values are present so this is the structure of isonophil now the isonophil if you want to see the isonophil 
what you do the stain which you put in the eosinophil you will get a dark red appearance dark red color appearance so this will show the presence of eosinophils in the white blood cells now next the eosinophil function is it helps in healing the wound it helps in healing the wound so how wound is healed means it helps in preventing it, what it does it helps in creating the blood clot how it helps in healing the wound by creating the blood clot so when blood clot will be formed when there is excess of bleeding blood clot when there is excess of bleeding from our body when there is excess of bleeding so the main function of eosinophil is that it helps in healing the wound that is creating the blood clots when there is excess of bleeding in our body another important function is that they help in they help to remove the parasites or they engulf the parasites so when parasites enter the uh, wbc when the parasites enter our body the immune system of wbc which engulfs the parasites are the eosinophils and gulps or kills the parasite are eosinophils so these are the characteristics of eosinophil that they are present in amount that is 6 to 7 percent they are too low then they appear dark red in color when they are being stained then they helps in healing the wound that is by creating the blood clot when there is excess of bleeding from our body and then it engulfs or kills the parasites which invade or which enters the body cells so this was all about the granulocyte the types of granulocytes that is neutrophils basophils and eosinophils the second category of wbc is a granulocyte now as i already mentioned in the previous only that a granulocytes means those wbcs which are not having not having granules in their cytoplasm in their cytoplasm so this is the characteristics of a granules that they are not having granules in the cytoplasm and the second thing is that the nucleus is circular the nucleus is circular means round it is not lobed like granulocyte so these are the two important characteristics of a granulocytes now a granulocytes granulocytes are further categorized into monocytes and lymphocytes so monocytes monocytes constitute about 2 to 8% of the circulating wbcs circulating wbcs means definitely wbcs are present in the cell so they will circulate all throughout our body so monocytes are present about 2 to 8% of the wbcs now the function of monocyte is that they act as scavengers they act as scavengers and what are uh, how they act as scavenger because what is the function of scavenger scavenger what they do they eat up the dead blood cells that is uh, they eat up the dead organic matter and what they do they keep the environment clean in the similar way the monocyte act as scavenger means they eat up the destroyed they eat up the destroyed cells and keep the body clean keep the body clean so this is the function of monocytes that they act as scavengers and eat up all the destroyed cells and keep the body clean now second type is lymphocyte now lymphocyte constitute about 20 to 30% 20 to 30% in the wbcs okay so now lymphocytes are categorized into t cells 
B cells and natural killer. Natural killer. So now what are T cells? So what is the function of T cells? Uh, lymphocytes. T cells, lymphocytes, what they do? They attack the foreign pathogen. Foreign pathogen or invader. Invader means the pathogen or any mycotarisms which enters in the body cells to destroy our tissues or the cells. So what did T cells do? T cells attack on the foreign pathogen immediately. Immediately they attack. Now second type of lymphocyte is B cells. Now what is the function of B cell? B cell what they do? They produce antibodies. They produce antibodies against the pathogens against the pathogens okay they produce antibodies against the pathogens and attach to the pathogens and kill it attach to the pathogens and kill it so this is the B cells. Now natural killer, natural killer what they do, they any type of, uh, uh, if abnormal tissues are present in our body, abnormal tissues if present in our body what they do, they kill them. They kill them or destroy them. Example, cancer cells. Okay, cancer cells. So natural killer what they do? They, uh, any type of abnormal tissues like cancer cells if present in our body, they kill them or destroy them completely. So these were the types of eight granulocytes. We have studied about the WBC that is there are two types, granulocytes and agranulocytes. Granulocytes are categorized into neutrophils, basophils and eosinophils. Agranulocytes are categorized into monocytes and lymphocytes. The difference between agranulocytes and granulocytes is that granulocytes consist of granules in the cytoplasm and agranulocytes does not consist of granules in the cytoplasm. So, another difference would be that the agranulocyte does not consist of lobe nucleus. They are they consist of circular nucleus whereas granulocytes consist of lobed nucleus. So this would be the main difference which you can find. Now the third component, the third component of the blood. We have started, we were studying about the components of the blood. We have studied about RBCs, we have studied about WBCs. Now the third component of the blood is blood platelets. Blood platelets. These blood platelets are also known as thrombocytes. Okay, so thrombocytes, why they are known as thrombocytes? Because thrombo means formation of clot. Formation of clot and sites means cell. So uh, blood platelets or thrombocytes are those cells which forms clot in our body when there is excessive bleeding from our body. Now, how they form the clot? By producing an enzyme. By producing an enzyme called thromboplastin. Thromboplastin. So, platelets are also known as thrombocytes because uh, thrombo means formation of clot and cytes means cells. So basically the function of platelets or thrombocytes would be production of or uh, formation of blood clot when there is excessive bleeding in our body. And how these blood clots are formed? Uh, the, because they produce an enzyme. These platelets produce an enzyme which is known as thromboplastins. So these thromboplastins are helpful for the clotting of blood in our body.